Hey guys, um, I wanted to make a video here explaining what's brand new in 1.3. I know I made a couple previews already. This is going to go over some of that stuff. Um, but the main reason I'm making this video is because I really want to test the performance of my new MacBook Pro. Uh, I got the, one of the new MacBook Pros with Thunderbolt with it, uh, the, the quad core i7. So I really want to test out rendering video. That's why I'm doing this. Uh, I also pretty sound pretty shitty because I'm sick. So whatever. Anyway, here's what's new in 1.3. I'm sure you didn't need to know all of that. First new feature. Well, here I'll just give you this list and then I'll go through it. Basically, blah. Okay. Pause it. You can look at it. I'm gonna go through the features. So, uh, first big change is you could set all your options for columns this way before by just defining a variable, whatever. This is still exists, but I don't see a lot of people doing that. I see people saying, well, that's too complicated or whatever. So you don't have to do this anymore. You can actually define that stuff actually in the code here. So let's take uh, order type, for example. Let's say we still want to link this and we still want to have Q equals value, right? So what we would do, let's just copy that. And let's just go ahead and get rid of that completely. Boom. Make sure we have our comma there. And then we'll just go down, and that was on the all grid, right? So grid all, we'll go down to order total. Order, was it type or total? Order type. Sorry. So we'll go down to order type, and we'll just add editable. I'm sorry, not editable. We'll add link equals, and we'll just put that in there. And it works the same. What is happening is the code, using a really awesome function um, up here, is actually going through and finding all the attributes you have selected and setting the column ops object for you automatically. So you don't have to set the column ops object. The column ops object is still what's used, but you can set the column ops object in the attributes. That's the key here, right? So I've set link to that. Um, let's say we want to, so let's save that and just look at it. So that's um, all the stop screen, which is down here, right? So that's this order type, right? See, these are links right now. If I refresh it, oh, look, there's still links and they still link to the correct place um, right see but the the key is that I was able to set that not in here so this other stuff discount code being editable text right so discount code uh, we would just come down here to say where are we at discount code we would just say editable equals text right and that's for discount code so now I can get rid of that from here and I think people are gonna be using this way a lot more than the other way another major reason so let me just show you that that works uh, that was discount code. And there it is again, discount code. Test, save. Oh, look, it's still. Hey. I got caught in my own, uh, my own feature. So the whole problem why this isn't saving is because I actually have security set um, on the field. So I'll explain security in a second, but I know that n items work. So like 901, save, and it actually saved that. But it doesn't save this. No matter what I type here, it won't save it. And that's because I actually have security set on the field. Uh, which let's take a look at that so in PHP under post save I have grid security set to an array and the only thing in the array is n items that means no matter what else is editable n items is the only thing that will be accepted why is this a good idea well the problem is because you can set these options in JavaScript and make something editable any user who knows anything about JavaScript could inject JavaScript into the editable grid, make a column editable, and save it back to the database, and it would work. So adding security on the fields means that you know exactly what you want to be editable, and you're defining that in the PHP, so no matter what happens to your grid, you're only going to accept these fields. So that's another feature, right? So if I take security off, just comment this out, then I can edit this just like that. Right, and if go again, this is editable because it's editable in inline instead of in the object. So it's editable because down here it says editable text. Okay, so that's that's one feature you can start adding in here. And that this is a really good idea is because you may want to create grids on the fly inside of a PHP loop. You know, create a bunch of grids, and if you had to create an object for all those, that really wouldn't be helpful. They all might have something different. So now you can do that all right here. I've changed the editable from inline to text. I think it makes more sense. Uh, modal editing is going to be a whole feature we're going to talk about later, not in this version. Um, another thing that we kind of brushed over is drop downs, which you can see here, and check boxes, which you can see here. I can check something and save it. Ta da. Um, their checkboxes is hugely, 
hugely successful. I'm really happy with that. I've used that for a lot of grids. Even if that's the only editable portion I have, is making a checkbox. It's just really nice to have. It works with a 0 and a 1 in a database. It will only work with a 0 and a 1. That's how it plays. Uh, so setting up the drop downs is, is really simple. Um, in the PH, basically all you do is you say uh, it's editable select, right? So again, we can take that TXN ID. Let's take that out of here and bring that down to here and say editable equals uh, select, right? And then the second part of that is you have to go into the PHP and just, uh, not that, you have to go into your Ajax file and just set that up. And it's really simple. All you do is just like you caught save, you're just going to catch select. And then you don't have to do this step if you're only saving one select box, but in this case, you know, just for purposes, I'm, I'm going to basically, if my call equals TXN ID, that's what I'm expecting, what you normally will probably do is throw a switch on the switch call, on the post call, and then just do for each select. And it's got the same the same syntax as all the other stuff. You you can even change the table because a select box often comes from a different table. So you can even set a grid table here, which is going to be different than the table you initialized it with, right? So you can set those fields just like you would before. I also added the ability to set the limit. Um, and basically you call it a grid make select. And what you're passing in here is the the column that's going to be uh, that you want to use as the value attribute for each option and this is the display attribute for each option it's the same because it's a demo I already did a video on it check that out and then you just echo encode the, the data and, and you got yourself a select box so really really simple to add drop downs uh, editable drop downs here so again just to show you how that works if I change this to say 2x605 right like that I can save and that actually will save that back and I had to do nothing special to the database all I had to do was set that up very simple let's say there was a null value so you would add null text to it so for example I would go to the select right and I would say null text equals uh, none selected right and that'll that'll if if the value is null it'll add that in there right so it'll add that none selected in there and it's basically equal to null so it's pretty cool so it you know it gives you the ability to have a, a null field in your select box which is nice um, and it just saves back null to the database so you know whatever just it's needed in some cases when you use the select boxes just know you have that um, another thing that is awesome is the uh, aggregate data so let's say I want to add up all this all the items I can right click it and uh, now I have a new looking menu here uh, much closer to the Mac looking menu but it tells me the sum the average the max and the min uh, and it's actually accurate now before when I did this video it wasn't accurate now it's fixed it shows you these four different values here um, and you know clicking them doesn't do anything it just shows you them, and it's smart so it knows that oh these have letters in it so they are not aggregate data and these are money values so there you go now it's got that aggregate data and it's really really nice and it's correct, <laughs> which is important. Um, in the future, I'm going to add the ability to, for these, I'm going to add the ability to check all, okay, and uncheck, okay. This is interesting. Uh, I didn't actually look at this before. It will show you how many are checked. It will show you the max and min will always be 1 and 0 in this case, and it shows you the average of the number that are checked. That's very interesting. I did not know that that worked here, but it does, and that's cool, and I like that. So, new feature right there. Just found out. <laughs> uh, this thing is very organic, the way it's growing. Anyway, um, right, null text. Oh, yeah, max and min. This is awesome. So, let's say uh, n items, right? n items only supports uh, 6 to... You know, on the database level, it only supports a certain amount of characters, right? So, if we go to our database and we say local all CMI test orders structure n items only supports 11 characters, right? Okay, so let's make that 3 just for, well, let's make that 4 just for our purposes, okay? It's only allowed to be 4. Let's say I want this field that is editable to only allow 4 characters. So the way I do that is now I actually globally turn it on and say generally use that, and I uh, have since forgotten what I called that, so forgive me while I look this up. It's called uh, max length. Okay, so on my file here, let's go to my all or nothing grid uh, right here, and let's just turn on max length. And that's all you have to do is just turn it on. Boom, turn it on. Now it'll set the max length. So if I try to type in more, oh look, I can only type in 
for characters. This is a really, really nice feature for making sure that you're not getting values cut off because you don't know you have a disconnect between what you can enter here and what you can save to the database. This is really cool. Uh, feature requested on YouTube. Um, another awesome feature is full screen mode. Uh, this was uh, a requested feature. Let's take this bottom grid and let's make it full screen. Um, so let's let's leave that. Let's just add a full screen equals true, right? So full screen is true. Whoa, full screen true, right? So now if I refresh, now I've got the grid here that's full screen, and this. Uh, pager at the bottom is stuck there at the bottom, which is really nice. Um, like a, like the Facebook bottom up. But the problem is, you're like it's only five results. It's true. If you're gonna go full screen, you probably want to change the number of results that you have. Just saying. So n rows showing. Let's make that more like 200, right? And now we refresh. And now we've got 200 rows in a full screen grid. And this this grid is uh you know. It's great for this. I need to add a feature that will resize it. Here, let me do that right in front of you because I'm sure you're curious. Uh, let's do the resize, which is right here. Uh, let's say grid dot here. You know what? Copy and paste. There, that's a new feature. <laughs> so now, uh, when I reload, when I refresh this, it's going to keep the columns in order. Excellent. I love that function. Anyway, so now we've got an awesome full screen grid. Um, that's scrollable and it's still searchable. Uh, you know, 59.95, whatever. It's full screen. It's great and wonderful. There you go, full screen grid. And it can you can even make it a configuration option in JavaScript and it'll do it automatically if you want to do it. I don't have that set up though. So right, full screen. We're gonna false that for now because I don't want that. And then just oh look, here we go, non full screen again. Okay. Uh, let's see, what else are we on? Okay, another great feature, searching where the results are not paged. So let's take this default grid, for example. Let's say I want to search for the price $59.95, right? $59.95. Okay, well, it gives me one of 103. Oh, do I have this, I have this turned on already? Yeah, my bad. <laughs> Defaults to true. Well, that ruined my cool example for you guys. So 59.95 and hit enter. It shows me one of 10 of 103. Well, I want my results to, when I do a search like that, I want all my results to show up. Why can't I do that? Well, now you can with setting uh, paged, page search results to false. Okay, it's true by default. Set page search results to false. And now when I do a search for 59.95, it shows me all 103 results, no paging. The page is still there because it's, you still want the rest of your functions here, but when you do a search now, it will show you all the results. So cool feature there. You can choose to have all results show up. It's just uh, kind of a preference thing for people. Um, don't allow letters in number of results box. Right. So if you, uh, if you type in AA, it won't do it, right? Okay. That was just, I don't know why that was a feature. It's more of a fix there. Um, yeah, it, it limit, limits the searching. You can't search for AA. Um, it'll, do, it'll do the filtering, but you can't take this query back to the database. And that's because uh, for a two query, for the amount of like that I'm doing, it would be crazy. It would literally be crazy, and it just really hurts the database. So in those cases, um, uh, you have to have at least three characters. You, can't, you can change that if you want, but you really shouldn't. Leave that alone. Um, it's not a configurable option, is what I'm saying. So let's talk about real quick what's coming out in 1.4. Uh, quick checkbox, it's a really awesome feature where uh, you just click on the first checkbox and you can drag down and it will select all the checkboxes while you're dragging. Um, that's a feature that a friend of mine made. <clears throat> I'll be implementing that. Where's my text document? Okay, check and uncheck all. Like I said, when you right click, you want to be able to check and check all. That'll be there. Um, you're going to be able to add a plus sign on the left side of the screen that will. Um, that will basically give the ability to have an extra piece of information that's the full length of the grid. More on that later. Hidden columns and pass through data. These are done now, but I couldn't get them right in time, in, t in time for this release, and I really wanted to get this out, so that will be soon. And then modal editing, which is basically whatever you've defined as editing, when you click edit, it'll add an edit button to the row. When you click edit, it will pop up a box and let you edit that instead. So that's just a couple of things coming up, and that is 
grid 1. Gopen.js grid 1.3. Sorry I sound so sick. Hopefully it didn't bother you that much.